Hey, and welcome to Winning Conversations. We are so glad you are here. We are excited to launch our Turn the Table series with some of our very favorite hosts and their spouses. So we have today with Dan and Shoshana. How are you guys? Good. Doing well. Good. Welcome to the podcast. I yeah. know. This is odd. <laughs> yeah. It's weird it's to be in this side. Being in the hot seat. I know. There's a lot more pressure. Yeah. I feel way worse for all the people that we put in the seat before. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be good. And of course, Andy is one of our hosts. So we're all here today. Yeah. It's kind of fun. <laughs> To turn the tables and to hear your guys' story. It is a little bit different. Like the whole video and everything else now. Yeah. It's yeah. just like, I'm so glad you're here for this. <laughs> Some support. Right? Yeah. Finally. You got this, babe. Thanks, hon. Yes, you get to see what he's been doing for a year in here. But we haven't had the cameras we on. We never looked this good. You know, it was always under different lighting. So now we're, we're looking fantastic. Yeah. Living good. Well, we're glad you're here. We're glad you guys are part of our church family. Mm-hmm. And people have heard your voice a lot on the podcast. And people will be like, who's that a guy? A lot. <laughs> yeah. uh, Sorry. And it's great. No, it's wonderful. And, uh, I have and a weird so laugh. I apologize. Now we get to get a bit more of an introduction to you all. Cool. So um, do y'all just want to start with how you even got to, and you're not no- native Texans. You're, we're not? I didn't think you so. You can't tell? <laughs> the, the flip-flops? No. The flip-flops and hoodies doesn't give it away here? Hoodie. No. Like you guys are just catching up. Um, Which is a funny joke because every time Daniel gets called to the front of church for something, he's wearing shorts and a flip flop. It is guaranteed an altar call moment for me if I'm looking scrubbed out. Like every <laughs> single time I have the worst outfit on, there's a moment <laughs> I've got to go up to the stage. It is, it's, it's awful. a sign. And every every time it's I'm like, sign. I don't know if I should always wear it or not wear it because I don't, love it. Just don't. It's like the Lord shows up, but I'm like, man, that's an odd look up there. That's not <laughs> the theme of this house. No. <laughs> so the San Diego shows through. From San yeah. Diego. From San Diego. Originally from San Diego. Yes, we moved out here in 2021 is when we moved out here. We had been married for just over a year, or right out a year when we moved out here. We got married in COVID. Which I just want to say, that when I heard that, I thought y'all had been married for years. Y'all have been, like, together. So, like, y'all, I don't know what it is, but I just thought y'all were just, like, always together. Because that's how y'all act with each other. Mm. I don't know. And then I heard that y'all had just gotten married, and I was like, that shocked me. Yeah, we met in the middle of the year in 2019, and then got <laughs> married nine months later, and are still getting to know each other. Um, yeah. But that kind of leads to what else we want to talk about, is how we've always wanted to do everything together um, from the start. So I don't know if you want to well, jump I, into that. Um, yeah, like, so, like, for us, ministry, like, we started dating, and, like, I never wanted to get married. Like, if people knew me, like, they wouldn't understand where I'm at now in life. Like my friends are always blown away. I never want to get married, never want any kids, never want to have a family. I was very just professionally driven and focused on that. And I was totally fine with being single. And then I met show and I was like, <laughs> I'm definitely getting married. You know what I mean? Like oh, if, there's, so if there's one thing I'm doing, it's marrying that girl. And I think I knew we've talked about this before. I think I knew like on our second or third date, I told my pastor at the time, I'm like, I'm marrying that girl. And they laughed in my face. They're like, oh, pump the brakes, bro. You know what I mean? Like, you're <laughs> you're 39 years old. Take your time. You've waited this long. I'm like, no. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, you know, and I, I no. knew for a fact we were going to get married. I'm like, that's the girl I'm marrying. That's it. And did you know this, too? Was this? Okay. This wasn't just one-sided. It well, was pretty one-sided. I mean, it, it, was, it was more, I knew I wanted, this would, would, would be somebody that I want to, like, dedicate myself to to make sure he's one right like yeah. I, it wasn't just a hey let's go on a date right. um it was hey i liked you i like where you're going let's see if this works and mm-hmm. it, we clicked like right away so mm-hmm. um we were pretty um doing everything together from the start yeah we were, and so in san diego we got into youth ministry like kind of right away like once we started we knew we were there we were new like it was you know we we want to be together we just kind of made the point of like, well, if we're going to do life together, let's do life together. You know, um, I, we, we had joked about on the, on the way here, like we, we met late in life. She was 38 and I was 39. Mm -hmm. So like, let's catch up for all the lost time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, we have 20 years of experiences on our own that we should have together. Um, so let's just get after it and start doing life together. And so the way our jobs worked, we kind of work from home. Um, we are our travel schedule, the things that we like to do. We just decided that if we're going to do something, let's just do it together. And it's not just a, Hey, let's go do this activity together. It's a, we go to sleep at the same time. Mm-hmm. We wake up at the same time. We <laughs> eat at the same time. Like everything is just done together. Hey, let's go for a walk with our dog. Everything's right. just together. It's nothing like I'm staying up while you go to bed. It's, mm-hmm. it's always been 
simultaneous and we listen to the same books together and we listen to podcasts together. People um, would think we're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so like people don't understand it when we talk about it. They're like, you do everything? Like, mostly everything we do, we do I together. I love that for y'all. Yeah. I love that for y'all. <laughs> that's what everyone says. It's yeah. like, that's great for that's you great guys. That's great for you guys. Big fans of what you're doing over there. <laughs> I think it's different when you get married late in life. I have friends that have gotten married uh, older in life, like older adults, not like older adults, but yeah. older in their adult life. And mm-hmm. so they do something similar where they just want to spend time together. It's like, like the time is passing. Let's make sure that we make the most of it together. Yeah. And I, th- I think for me personally, it's like, I hung out with a lot of different people and I didn't like any of them. <laughs> like, I hate to say it that Let's way. Be honest. Like, you know what I mean? Like enough that I want to spend all my time with them. Yeah. Right. And so when I met show, I knew that was completely different. I'm like, I want to spend all my time with you. Like there's a reason yeah. that God put us together and everything else. So let's, I, I, I think it's awesome that we do. Like and she's the only person I've never gotten tired of. So <laughs> most people I'm like a day, I'm like, all right, we should right, probably, I'm good. We should take a break <laughs> her. I, I, it's, it's, we just, it's an awesome, like, again, it's just an awesome time to hang out together all the time. So, so y'all met it. in San Diego? We met at, um, so she was creeping on me through social media and she nice. doesn't like to talk about it, <laughs> but <laughs> her cousins were my life group leaders and they're like, Hey, you should meet my Aww. cousin. And I was like, hard pass, definitely not doing it because every relationship I, you know, you're, that's my life group leaders. I'm yeah. Like, to that point, all my relationships had not ended well, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I wasn't, you know, so I'm like, I don't want to meet your cousin and then it not work. And then right. I lose my life group. Like, I'm like, no way. And then she hit me up on social media and I'm like, I guess we can go out. You well, know? My, <laughs> my cousin said, you got to meet this guy, Dan Jordan from our church. And so I looked him up to, you know, of course. Yeah, check him out. and he had old pictures of like cigarettes well, and girls all. and like <laughs> stuff. And I was not, like, nope, no. done, no. done, nope. Mm-mm. And so he said he had not done true. a deep dive I, on his social Old social media. I had purged so much <laughs> stuff. Like that. I had gotten rid of everything. Like I, I lived in Vegas for well, 15 years. Girls I got are going to find that. them. We're gonna find the pictures. Yeah. I had no idea it. she it's was as sleepy as she was. How much you can find? Yeah, yeah. and we will yeah. find them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, and I, I have heard like so. People who don't know my that's like I lived in Vegas for a long time, and then I moved to San Diego. Right. And I had specifically like purged everything. Like, yeah. I'm like that's not me. I got rid of all of it. I thought. <laughs> 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 she discovered some stuff, and she's like, "Oh, this guy's no way." And I'm like, well. My cousin's like, just give him a chance. You know, he's funny. He's, you know, he's on a different path now. And, and so (laughs) we kind of, there's more to it, but we ended up, our first date was on a hike. And, um, back then he had, had had back surgeries like 10 years prior. Mm -hmm. And so you always had back issues. And that week before you were laid out, couldn't do anything, but for some reason you were able to go on that hike with me and. We have a um, weird backstory of how we, like, yeah, the stuff that went, like, the <laughs> stuff that went through, like, our entire relationship has been, like, amazing God moments. Yeah. And it's, like, been the, the most powerful parts of our marriage is, like, like, God has marked it in such significant ways. And the things we've done, like, the places we've been, the miracles that have happened in our lives and that we've been able to witness. And so, yeah, it started with uh, our first date, me being able to walk. So. Well, <laughs> how did you get to live in Fort Worth, Texas? COVID. COVID brought you, brought you COVID. here. Well, COVID brought you to Texas. COVID opened the door because at the time she was working for a, a company in San Diego and they're still working, still working yeah. but like brick and mortar, you got to go to it and everything else. And COVID was like remote. And so the second in my job, I, I work for myself. So I could go anywhere as long as I have internet and that became her reality. So it was like, well, I never want to live in California <laughs> and we could either be house poor in California, or we could right. be life rich anywhere else. Um, we just sort of started narrowing it down with states that we wanted to go to that were um, small business friendly, tax friendly, and same time of type of values and people and community. And so we narrowed it down to a couple of states and Texas kept coming up as like the one we really liked. And so I just started browsing for homes all over Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, and we wanted to <laughs> I got to the point of like, I want to just build my own home because we're spending this much money on it. Why don't we just try and build? And with everything that I wanted in it, we're up, you know, close to a million. That will never happen. So, <laughs> yeah, we we yeah, speaking live. Right? Yeah, speaking live. <laughs> we always um, knew his mom would be living with us in her older years, and so we wanted a spot where she'd have a room there. And we found this one floor model at a place out in Fort Worth, and we called. It was like the New Year's of 2020 
to 2021. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we called and asked um, if there are any available and they said they had two left. We're like, okay, we need to go out there and see it. We were going out the following weekend, scheduled a trip to come and sign papers. Mm -hmm. But we also reached out to a realtor to see if we can find some other properties around just in case. And so we went- Around and, here? Yes. Okay. Well, we wanted, we wanted a place so, that was within like five ripples out from a major city. city. Yeah. Okay. Well, like for, for people from California, <clears throat> Dallas is LA and Fort Worth is San Diego. That's right. the equivalent okay. in our world. Right. No one likes LA. Sorry, Dallas. And I lived <laughs> in a small little <laughs> country town that was, right. uh, you know, it was really small off the beaten path. And yeah. so that's what I was used to it was more rural, but you're close enough to good food and yeah, the airport right. and stuff. So we just wanted, we wanted Fort Worth suburb around Fort Worth kind of rippling out, but like near Costco, cause we're from California and that's, man, that's like <laughs> part of our DNA and near an airport cause we travel a lot. Um, and so yeah, Godly. And then we saw the name Godly pop up. I'm like, oh, wouldn't that be so cool yeah. to live in a town called Godly it's hard in to Texas? Turn away from that, so isn't cool. That? People, yeah, you guys that live here don't know what kind of diamonds in your backyard, all right? Because that place is awesome. Um, and so we got out here, and of course, the house that we were looking at originally was awful. Oh. It was like awful. The house model no, that no, you no, picked the, out. So the model that we went to go look at was not a good floor plan, it was just very closed in. And so we, Okay, thank you. That was good. So let's go see the realtors um, right. tour of homes. Yeah, and we had one in on God in Godly on our list, but it was already sold by the time we looked at Tuesday on Tuesday, and by the time we got in on Saturday, everything was. This is when the market was going crazy. Yeah, yeah. Right. the cash offers right, right. and people were just buying it. Like it was on the market for an hour and it was gone. Mm -hmm. So so he told us he went and saw a couple, and then he said there's one other that came up in Godly that I want you to look at. Um, it just came on the market today, and so we went and saw it. And as soon as he walked in, he's like. This is it. This is it. And so we put an offer on it that night and the owners that it was a custom home mm -hmm. and they had backed out of closing two days before. And so it was, it was our just, home. it was yours. It was yeah. there Mentors. for us. It was, it was on home. the market any longer. Or someone else would have grabbed it. There it was, was actually another an offer on it. Yeah. Yeah. So another offer that night. Um, but we ended up getting it on, well, actually on Sunday, I sent a, <laughs> an, a picture to the realtor of Daniel and I in front of the house, you know, our little selfie. And I said, you have to send this to the to the sellers and let them know that they can't sell the house to anybody else. It's already ours. We have our picture here. <laughs> and he did that. And he that said, worked. He, that, he, that worked. Like, if you don't know my wife, wow, that worked. Like, that's the crazy that they're like, oh, yeah, we won't sell it to you as long as you guys took a photo in front of it. It's definitely your house. It's yours. Yeah. yeah. And we'll the, get it. the seller was a Christian. Um, and it was awesome just to have that yeah. connection later on. Um, but we ended up getting it on Monday morning. So we have this house. We just won the offer. And... We haven't asked our work. We haven't don't have a down payment. We have, like we, like, we weren't like, ready for any of it. We thought for sure we we're gonna sign paperwork and then like move into a house in like July, June, like later in the year when it's being built. <laughs> this is like two weeks later we're moving in. We're like, uh, oh, all right. I guess we're moving to Texas. So it became a like real prayer game. Like, all right, Lord, like right. there's some this, there's some it. massive yeah. doors that you have to open for us to move. Like mm -hmm. like doors that we don't have the key to. Yeah, we have no access to. It's a hundred percent you. So this will be very easy. If we're meant to move to Texas and get this, you'll make the way. And there was like three massive doors. Like you had to get your job to say yes, you could move. At the I, time you had an employer that you went in. My clients in. had to say yes to me because I did a lot of on-site stuff. And then the down a down payment, payment. <laughs> the finances. Um, and God it just took worked care of it all. every single one and of them. And we closed in like 23 days. Yeah. And we moved um, out during the ice out, storm. Came out, signed the papers during the ice storm. I remember. remember so we were stranded in Godly mm -hmm. with no any of that stuff. Yeah, it was. It's been an experience ever since we moved here. It's been great. <laughs> yeah. Well, how did you find out about us? So my life group leaders, which are my cousins, uh -huh. our best friends, they with were the on, Greco's. Yeah, they were on the worship team oh. with the Gian Greco's in San Diego. So they became best friends, and then they had moved out in 2020, 2012, Whatever, yeah, 2012 ish. See, I didn't. 2013, know that. and so. When my cousin found out we were moving to this area, he said, I have best friends I want you guys to meet. And the first time we came out, we went to their Thrive Group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was the first time, like that first weekend, we went to their Thrive Group and then went to Heritage of Faith Church and just started. I mean, we checked out another church in Godly. God has us here in Godly. Let's yeah. see if find something that's really close. Mm -hmm. uh, it just wasn't a fit. And we just went to, th to three of them maybe. And we kept coming back to Heritage and love the people and just connected right away. You know, Pastor Justin and Miss Annette are so welcoming. And um, well, you were the first person we met. Yeah, 
Like I, remember, I remember distinctly walking in. You're the first person that walked up and said hi. And like, you know, when you're new to church, you're always trying to avoid. Oh, yeah. Hey, does that sound so no, bad to no, say no. that? Like you're trying no, to get in it, quietly and yes. kind of sneak in. And then yeah. Tanya was like, oh, hi. <laughs> and I was like, ah, yeah. okay. I guess we're here now. She's yeah. like, we have a welcome package for you guys. It was yeah. like crazy culture. Well, but you guys, I feel like y'all came here and then you're just like involved in everything. Like I see y'all at like every event. Y'all are serving everywhere. So we always wanted to any place that we were at and we we went to the connect class right away um but we wanted to dive in and serve wherever god had us and so that yeah, was, you can tell well, that, that the was hospitality our, group the kids ministry anything that if someone needed help with we wanted to be a part of if we could help we figured we said out loud to ourselves like we want to be hands in a community feet. we want to be hands and feet so if we're going to be in a community we want to be in the community like we didn't come out here for no reason right so it was what better way to get involved than to, you know, get involved. And so <laughs> and we both have the flexibility to, our you know, schedule we don't have allows kids. Us to I have, mean, I have a son, but we don't have kids that are at home. So we have the right. flexibility to do whatever's needed. Um, we can stay at home. We can work during the week if we need to. So it became, you know, and just, we really do like, it's such a, it's a crazy blessing to be able to serve when you get the mm -hmm. opportunity. Like, and there's such amazing leaders of the teams that were on like Shex and G and the hospitality mm -hmm. team. And then, like you guys in terms of like doing this and uh miss hannah and the and the youth it's right. like we're there's just so many cool people that that you get to be a part of in these groups yeah. and it's why we know as many people as we do like mm -hmm. we've gotten really blessed to like actually get to know a lot of different families in this church and different mm -hmm. groups in this church so our latest one was the restore group which i don't know if everyone is knows about restore but yeah. that's one we do on friday nights um and we both have um peppered pasts peppered salt past. and pepper um, <laughs> healthy like past, right. um, where that. we've come out of a lot that we're able to um, relate to a lot of people in different situations. And so yeah. God's kind of put it on Justin's heart to start a group where um, we could help people with overcoming depression, grief, uh, suicidal drugs, alcohol, addictions, anything that kind of burdens you. Um, they get to come and kind of get freedom from that. And we get to be part of that. And that's one of my <clears> favorites just because relate to it so well yeah this is a big part of our own testimony and journey of having what we've overcome in terms of you know what life was before we were really on fire and serving the way we should have been and it's awesome to be in that place where you're actually being able to be used mm -hmm. and the you know the restore group and the and the thing on the heart for pastor justin and then pastor vic and everyone who's running it it's such a cool thing to be a part of it to see it transforming other people's lives like it really is it's awesome to see and just kind of w witness what the Lord does when you're willing. So cool. It's it's really neat to have couples who love to, to dive right in and be the hands and feet of Jesus in our church body. And you guys have done that pretty consistently. Uh, tell us a little bit about coming into community in a way that has impacted your life. So you talked about Tommy and Christy and going to their Thrive group. They actually told me about you guys. I knew y'all were coming that first Sunday because they're like, hey, we got friends or cousins. And they're like, <laughs> like you have to meet them. Yeah. So I was intentional about meeting y'all because oh. I wanted to <laughs> I wanted to meet them. And they vouched for you. They said these are great people, and it's proven to be 100% true. So wow. um, so nice <laughs> yeah. Thanks, tell Tommy us tell us a little bit about why community, connection, fellowship, whatever whatever label you put around it, why is that important when you're serving God? Because everybody can jump in and serve in the kingdom of God. Everybody's called to that. Mm -hmm. But there's something special about actually building life together. I think you should also point out about how – the accountability for you and us. Go ahead. No, you, <laughs> <laughs> you're on it. Go for it. Oh, um, how great that's been for your growth and relationships and the people around you, like bringing you to another level. So some of the friends or groups that he was around in San Diego had different compromising things for him in his life. And so um, out here, there's no compromise. Um, with the people that we hang out with and that's been really good for growth i mean even in the language and conversations like i think i've we talked like, about hey, i'm killing it <clears throat> well no you're not killing it was you know one we always joke about because you don't want to say that language. actually yeah. even though you're it, just yeah. being sarcastic you just got to change the way you're speaking uh, and thinking over good. things a very good friend of mine who shall remain nameless mr martin um <laughs> is constantly oh sorry constantly correcting my speech when i when i am loose with my tongue and i just came from a culture that was a little bit like i always talk about how much i've appreciated like this community mm -hmm. like how 
the word of faith or whatever you want to call it, not so much a domination, but just the culture of heritage of faith is significant in terms of excellence, in terms of trying to like everyone that we know is on fire, mm-hmm. like for the Lord and everyone we hang out with, like the most important conversation that we'll have is about God or our faith or the journey or the things that we're doing for the Lord. Mm-hmm. Every single couple we know, like every person that we hang out with, has that conversation. And you just don't understand what that does to your own faith and your own walk yeah. when that's all you're surrounded by. Like when you're surrounded by giants in faith, it just, you can't help but go to the next level. It brings level. you up. Exactly. You just yeah. can't help but want to like, oh my gosh, like it, you're just blown away mm-hmm. by their faith levels. Mm-hmm. And we didn't have that where before. We, we had great community where we were before. Like, I don't want to bash it. We had amazing people that we loved and that were on fire, but it wasn't like this. Like this place is saturated. Like it truly is. People care about you here. People reach out to you when you're like, they miss you. Like there's, like, you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah, like it's yeah. not normal. Um, <laughs> people don't realize that it's not normal. Like this environment is not normal. Yeah. It is supernatural and it's life giving. And it's been the greatest thing for us, our marriage. Um, I mean, we moved out here. We were still, I mean, newlyweds, mm-hmm. you know, and we, this time out here, we knew it would be a great time for us to solidify our relationship our marriage, the things that we value, that we care about. And Heritage of Faith has been instrumental in that. Like, you know, Pastor Justin and Pastor Annette are unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Like they're unbelievable pastors. Like people don't realize how good the teaching is here. Mm -hmm. And I was, we were just talking about it yesterday. I went to lunch with another person who's here and we were just raving to each other about like, isn't it cool that this is the house (laughs) we sit in? Like it's, these are the conversations that we get to have with true sincerity about, wow, we appreciate this place. And we I just, we've never had that before and so as a couple as a like it's just we can't say enough good things about why it is that we're here and so that's why we love serving because wow. it's a joy and like you pointed out i love that it's all done in excellence mm-hmm. so. well i think that's a good segue into our our good way to go. our question you're getting good you know. at this <laughs> Well, You're getting you. really good at this guys <laughs> i don't know who's on that side but you guys are getting really good at this so as you know, our motto here in Heritage is making winners in life. Is that it? Did you know that? I don't know. If I, you knew. I was on, but Are I you know now. So for this question, Dan, I, I was <laughs> curious if it was coming. I cannot wait to hear, and it better be good, because you <laughs> you ask the question all the time. I want to know what does making winners in life mean to you, both of you? I'll let you start. Okay. For That's me, okay. ladies first. <laughs> making winners in life. God created each of us with a purpose. And he gave us certain talents and gifts and callings and whatever you want to title it. Um, But he gave us a purpose in this world. And so when we are living that out and around people that call us up into those things, that's being a winner in life because you are succeeding in what God called you to do. It's a great answer. Loved it. Very good. (laughs) Wow. Follow that. (laughs) All right. So I have to go after that. That's really good. It's crazy because I've heard everybody else's answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the hard part is I've heard some really dynamite answers (laughs) to this question that I was like, oh. You never think of it that way. Never. I never do. Um, I mean, I guess what is a winner is is really when you're in obedience with what the the Lord's calling you to do. Like like when you're where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be, and you're just being obedient to his voice. You're a winner. Like that's like I just I define winning as obedience. If I'm where I'm supposed to be, if I'm in the word, if I'm doing the right things, if my relationships, I mean, if I'm listening to his voice, then I'm a winner in life. And this house does that. Like it, if you don't get fed here, I don't know what you're doing. You know what I mean? And it sounds really harsh to someone who might not be receiving, but I've been in places where I wasn't. I've been in in seasons where. It, I wasn't on fire or the, like his voice was quiet or there was distance and separation. And those were all my fault. It wasn't his fault. It wasn't like mm. he was doing it. Like, like it was definitely on me. But when you're here, there's just so many people that are calling you up. There's so mm-hmm. much teaching. There's so many people yeah. around you that are just kind of moving you to the next level. I mean, like from every person that we've met, I mean, legitimately every person that we've met couple wise, I mean, the joys you know, the people like that are in this room, Mm -hmm. like that we've met from the moment that we've got here have been so impressive in terms of their walk, their faith. And this isn't a Sunday faith. It's a Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. Well, how they look on Wednesday is how they look on Sunday is how they look on Tuesday is how they look on Thursday. Like it's crazy. Mm -hmm. And you don't always get that. You Mm -hmm. don't get like, like sometimes you get people that wear that, that front to church. Yeah. 
<clears throat> and I say that because I used to be that dude that looked away on Sunday and for sure looked different other times. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I kind of really appreciate and gravitate towards those authentic winners in life mm-hmm. who are winners every single day because okay. they're on fire for the Lord and they're being called up to more and they're being obedient to what they're being called to. And it's just, it's so cool to be in that environment. It's so rewarding. I love it. Thanks, yeah, that's pretty good. Is that pretty good? That's pretty good. I, that's it's a great answer, and it's so true yeah. what you're saying about. I mean, I think that's why you guys fit in so well because you are authentic in your faith. That it is, uh, you know, Hoodies on Monday all. through I Saturday, know. hoodies and all. <laughs> but there's a realness to you guys both that is attractive to us, which is why we're glad that you're part of our family. But I think it's why you probably were attracted to Heritage of Faith. Yeah. It's something that comes from the top. I mean, I think the Savilles are like that. I think Pastor Justin and Annette are like that. And if you work and you see them day in and day out. They're walking it out. It's not like they don't have things, and and we all we all have things. So, yeah. um, thank you for being part of our church family. I mean, <laughs> we're honored to have y'all, we love and it. we're honored to have Dan. Yeah, and our of, podcast and family. Our podcast I know. Family. How cool is this? So, thank you this for being. So weird on this side of it. I can't wait. It's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming soon. It's going to be so fun. But we're thankful for you both. We're so glad you were here, and thank this you. was a fun way to send off our first turn yeah, the tables great. episode. <laughs> Thanks for doing this with me. Finally, my better half. They get to know you. <laughs> well, it's great to it's great to have y'all as part of our church family, and um, we're really looking forward to hear everyone else's turn the tables. Well, this is great. Thank you again so much for being here, Dan. We'll see you. I mean, okay. soon, <laughs> very around. soon. You'll be around. Hopefully, yes. And thank you everybody for listening and watching. Now, um, tune in next week for more winning conversations. <laughs> <laughs>